A very good evening to you out there. Welcome to another interesting episode of Political Turf on Impact Africa Television, ITV. My name is Anul Wakbo Omoride. On the program this evening, a former governor of Ikita State and a former deputy national chairman of the All Progressives Congress is my guest on the program, Engineer Shegwoni. Thank you so much for your time on the program. It is good to have you. And now there are people who have expressed reservations as to the fact that when you talk of the PDP politics in the Kitty State, uh, they see it as an aberration that Engineer Shegwoni is not being talked about um, to the extent that when you talk of the, the torso, for the leadership of the PDP structure in Ekiti State. Uh, you talk of former minority leader of the Senate, Gildo Olijini, and former governor, Ayodele Fayoshi. And so there are people who believe, what Shegwoni doing in the PDP if he's not regarded as one of the leaders of the factions of the PDP in the state? Well, I'm not a leader of any faction. And, um, and I'm very, very confident to say that. I'm back in the party. I'm one of the leaders of the party. And uh, my recognition is not in dispute. But I am not for any factional contest. Mm. So if you do not belong to any of the factions, and yet you're gunning for the governorship seat come 2022, uh, don't you think it's going to be a bit difficult if you don't pitch your tent? with any of these two factions? It may be difficult, but it's not, a, it's not an impossibility. And uh, difficult jobs get done by people who are determined and people who are strategic and people who show resilience and understanding. So it will be a difficult job. Yeah. It will get done. Uh, let, let me ask you this. It, it appears Governor Shim, uh, Governor, former Governor um, Ayodele Fayoshi is everywhere to the extent that some persons will say uh, Biodun Olujimi is only playing pranks and of course being used by some persons. Ayodele Fayoshi owns the PDP structure in Ekiti State. If I may ask you, you have said you are for, you are not for any of these factions in Ekiti State. But do you have leaders in any of these people? I'm not doubt about the fact that you're a former governor and you should be seen as a leader in your own wise. But of course, not many people will identify with you in that wise. So in Biodun Olujimi, in former governor, Yodele Fayoshi, um, would you say you have, you know, a leader in either of the two of them? Of course, there are leaders of the party. There are some of our leaders. They are not all the leaders. Um, we have others. You see, don't let us pigeonhole everything in terms of factions and you politics, uh, you uh, journalists, drive politics in a way as to always interpret it to our criminals. No. It's not that. Is there a crisis in PDP in Ekiti State? There, there was a part there of are Congress. Disagreements. Okay. There are disagreements, but I don't think it has become a crisis yet. So uh, is Ayodele Fayoshi reaching out to you? Is Biodun Olujimi reaching out to you? Who among them is reaching out to you at this time? I reach out to both of them. They reach out to me. The, the party is a party for all of us. And uh, there are still other leaders. It's not just even those two people alone that make up the leadership of the party. A little while ago, I was, uh, I was telling somebody that the foundation members of this party in this state, many of them are alive and they are still playing leadership role, they are also leaders. So not much is being heard of them. That's why I say that you journalists promote whatever would 
make interesting stories as you know it, 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 unfortunately it may not be about the journalists factions and factionalization mm. um there are a lot of leaders who are still very relevant and around so and now i've observed the trend in equity politics especially when you talk of the governorship i identify your shaken um he was impeached you took over from him and so you left another person took over he left so is it a coincidence uh, that governors in the state don't use out their eight-year term if at all they will recontest at somehow you look at dr Kari if i mean he would have to come back me didn't bother coming back you will have to come back and so it's like a recurring thing is that a key to politics for you or we're talking of coincidence here yeah. Well, it may be a coincidence. I, I don't know. It may be a coincidence, but one thing is very clear. Our people also are not, are not to blame. Because democracy means every four years you go and revalidate uh whatever mandate even four years the people think that they should try another alternative so be it and that is what democracy is by the way anyway that people should have the opportunity to say no when they are not satisfied and to say yes when they believe this is what they want the question that comes to mind at this time is what did Shegwoni forget in the government house uh, that he wants to go and pick at this time? Okay, uh, everyone is talking about you know the older generation leaving the stage for the younger ones, and so even outside Ikiri State, the question is your poster is out there coming down from Adukiti to Ifakikiti. Yeah, one would see your poster. Um, so you are keen and serious about this race, uh, but would you tell Nigerians? Uh, why this governorship seat is so attractive to you? Is there a mandate you, you didn't fulfill at some point in time that you must go back, you know, to complete at this time? Let me first answer the first part of your question. What did I forget? I forgot nothing there. I came in to serve. I'm in politics because I believe there is a niche that I could serve. I believe there are ideas and orientations that I can bring into the governance of a kitty that will enhance the quality of life of the people and give this state a better edge. Can you be trusted this time around? That is the question on the mind of people. Uh, the fact that you left the APC for the PDP, um, some persons will say, okay, he's come back home, but to others, Someone who has risen to the position of a deputy national chairman of a party, uh, it suggests that perhaps what you ran for from the APC is what you're facing in the PDP. Well, the question about why I, you're asking so many questions, you are not even allowing me to answer one. Please go ahead. That. But let me answer the very last one. I left the APC because I felt that the APC did not handle itself with enough dignity for its own officials. And that is the reason why a whole national chairman of the, of the APC ended up leaving office because he was suspended at his word. What happened to me happened to Governor Shomali. I, When you are Deputy National Chairman, you are Abuja based. In your, and when you are Chairman, of course you are Abuja based. And if a group of people who will not even rank enough to be the people who you can 
call and send on errands in your base decides to give you a query without uh, even allowing you to to defend yourself they suspend you and so on and there is no body within the system for months who could see that something going on is not dignifying enough for whatever political party you will call a party of respect. I, I am not going to subject myself to indignity. Did Kayo kind of defy me pushed you out of the APC? I don't know. I don't know. Because I will not, I will not believe that I didn't know that I was suspended, but nobody pushed me out of the APC. I left the APC because I cannot subject myself to indignity of for a, whatever reasons. Of the truth, do you have any regrets? Because the same party that you left within the last one week, I am sure you must be surprised at the exodus of politicians, gladiators, back to that party. Are you, do you have any regret that, okay, um, I hope I didn't, you know, take the wrong step? Far from it, I have told you. You see, I'm not a, a jobber. I'm not a politician who is looking for anything that will give him either an elevation of status or food to it. I left, like I said, I left because the party did not treat me with enough respect. And I would, I would see it any, any, anywhere. Nobody has been able to contradict what I said. So if anybody else is going there, that's left to them. If what I believe is not enough respect is enough for any politician, that is by their own standard, my personal standard. I want to be treated with respect. Are you, are you getting me. that in the PDP presently? Of course. Of course. Don't forget, I am also a part of this party from the inception. And people who know you, they know what you represent. And they respect you for that. I cannot imagine myself being grossly disrespected in a party where I was doing my best to contribute my lot to its progress without counting cost. And I believe if they don't value one another, if they don't respect one another, it's a matter of time that all those contradictions will catch up with them. That's why Oshom only left. Almost exactly what happened to me. When I was Deputy National Chairman, Chief Clement Avery was suspended at his word. Almost the same scenario. And I read it in the newspaper, I said, what? And I called all of them from his word and so on. I said, look, I'm not asking you to come and start telling me the story and this happened and that happened. You are suspending Clement Avery. I am not saying he is infallible. But he has been your governor. Many of you were not even beginners in any way when he was governor. Say, don't you think it is disrespect? That we are not here to disrespect one another. This is not a party of disrespect. 
I said, go and give him an apology. If Clement Avery offends you, he can offend you, report Clement Avery to us at the National Working Committee through the channels that you should take. Local government, state, and to us. And we will call him. And if we find him guilty, whatever we need to do, we'll do. But you cannot subject, it's like somebody will be a former president someday and they can suspend him in his word. Is that bad? Politics is local. Yeah, but then there must be, you must give allowance for dignity. Okay, uh, the program is Political Talk on Impact Africa Television. We'll take a breather now. The program returns shortly. Please stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. It's still Political Talk on Impact Africa Television, RTV. Um, Engineer Shegmoni, former governor of Ikita State, is still very much with me in the studios this evening. Thank you so much for your time once again. Um, a makeshift studio for that matter. Uh, we're looking at politics. L let's talk about national politics. Now, there is the disconnect between what is happening in the APC, a party you left, and the reality on ground. Now, a cross-section of Nigerians uh, believe that it is absurd that some persons are returning to the APC at a time when uh, many people, including yourself, uh, would think that poverty is on the high level. Now, people are returning to the APC perhaps because they see good governance. Or oh, what to you would have made them? Fanny Kayode has been linked, your, you know, your colleague, um, former governor of Ugo State, Binga Daniel, is making, you know, a return. So, uh, couldn't that be an evidence of the fact that APC, the party you left, is delivering, you know, governance the way it should perhaps be delivered? Or oh, why would they be going back to a party that someone like you rejected? Well, First, our values may be different. The, the purposes we want to serve in politics may be different. Our orientations may be different. The way we look at things may be different. But if you are saying, if you are trying to conjecture a reason that they are going because the government is delivering good values to the people, I will say, I will advise you not to say it in town. No, don't say it in town. Because you might be incurring the wrath of the average Nigerian. What's your impression about governance at the federal level now? Governance at the federal level right now is not because I'm not in that party any longer. It's it's been going down and it's going down, continuously going down. I haven't seen any serious effort to bring it up. What are the indices and parameters with which you're measuring governance uh, that led to this conclusion? We came in to arrest insecurity, one of our cardinal programs. Can you say security now, all around in Nigeria, is better than what it was five years ago, six years ago? You are. You should answer the question yourself. It has never been this bad that you hear of kidnapping, you hear of, uh, in fact, armed robbery has become now a lesser crime. And it used to be on top of the crime ladder. It has become a much lesser, it's now being seen as minor crime. 
it has never been this bad for Nigeria. That's one of the indices you use to measure the performance of government. The economy, I always tell people, economy, there's no need for big, big grammar. Indices. What is the worth of your Naira? Relative to the dollar. That will tell you how well or how badly your economy has been managed. How much was a Naira worth relative to the dollar some six years ago? And how much is it now? We must, we must tell ourselves home truth. We must be ready to appraise ourselves properly. Mm. So to you, governance is in the wrong ends at the federal level. Oh yeah, it's going down. Uh, as we wrap up this discussion, uh, let's quickly look at the tertiary, the internal wranglings in the PDP, especially in the southwest region of the country. Former Governor Yudili Fayoshi and Governor Shei Mark in the art loggerheads as regards who leads the party in the southwest region. Former Governor Fayoshi would say, okay, um, by status as incumbent governor, I would give him respect, but that does not mean that he's my leader. He will cite the example of Babaji de Sanwulu and former, you know, Governor uh, Ashwajibola Tinubu in Lagos State. To you, um, you are the Zona uh, Congress um, called by Governor Shea Makinde. And that was like a springboard, you know, to the crisis rocking. Uh, because some persons who believe they should be invited, you were there at the government house in Ibadan. Others were not invited and that escalated the problem. Now, if you are to mediate, what will you tell both parties? Who is actually the leader of the PDP in the Southwest? How should this crisis be managed? You see, let us face issues squarely, properly. There was a time that Governor Fayoshi was the only governor. And what rose and what uh, latitude were extended to him. I believe that if we now find ourselves in a situation where another person coincidentally is the only governor, Whatever rules, whatever latitude, whatever respect we extended to Governor Fayoshi then should be extended to Governor Makinde now. That's, that's me. Really? And that suggests that you're pitching your tent with the Biodo Olujimi faction and the PDP. I am not pitching my tent with anybody. Mm. And I keep saying it. Look, let me tell you. When when the state con we had a state congress here, the announcements for the state congress was made by the National Working Committee. And I attended the state congress that was announced by the Working Committee, which happened to be, coincidentally, the state congress for Governor Fayoshi's uh, group. I hate to to say faction. A lot of people, especially from uh, the Olujimi and said, oh, he has pitched his tent with uh, uh, Governor Fayoshi and so on. I said, I will always do what is right. And, and I maintain my stand. A lot of people didn't like it then. And a meeting called by Governor Makinde, and you were saying that uh, it was Congress. There was no zonal Congress called by Governor Makinde. Governor Makinde cannot call a zonal Congress. Zonal Congress will have to be mandated 
by the, the national day. maybe a meeting yeah. that that should be a slip of the tongue. But a meeting, of course. I attended the meeting as one of the leaders of the party invited, and I and I understand that other leaders, even those that were not present, were invited. So look, let us try and reduce the ego content of some of these things and face the realities of it. We can all work together. You don't have to be number one, I am number two, and uh, he's number three. Before we can enjoy comradeship, I believe that the National Working Committee would do something. I must say this. Especially that we have two committees. We have the Saraki Committee for Reconciliation at the national level. We have the Onyilola Committee for Reconciliation at the uh, zonal level. level. I believe that between the two of them and the National Working Committee, this problem will get solved. Now, I must say a big thank you to you. We really need to wrap up these but. I won't go without asking these. Are you just giving this governorship a trial? Are you really serious about it? Uh, to the extent that, okay, if I get a ticket, because others will just for the ticket with you, if I get it, not bad. If I don't get it, for you, is it a do or die? You see, the do or die, I, I consider that really out of place. Mm. a word to use. I have been governor once. Even when I was going for governorship for the first time, I didn't do a do or die. There is no reason for me to do a do or die or, on anything. And by my character, why should I do a do or die on anything? I have been blessed by God the Almighty and I'm a very, very contented person. So I can't do a do or that. But I want to have an opportunity to solve some of the problems that we left that are still there. Mm. Okay, uh, I think we're going to leave it for the people of Ikiti here. Our uh, time will tell, but we wish you well um, in this pursuit. Thank you so much, Engineer Sheikh Mouni, for your time on the program. It's been a revealing time, an interesting time. And I'm sure um, one of these days we'll be back, you know, when um, the politics of Ikiti, the road to the government house, when the politics, you know, to the government house would have been at its peak. Um, looking forward, probably having you in the studio. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, sir, for your time on the program. I am Anu Oluwakbo Mori. They're not a fan of See you next time.